Thanks, y'all. So, um, so now, guys, we're just going back to some logarithms. I wanted to get through some problems that I was at least explaining um, what to do. But now going through on some logarithms, uh, what you guys have is, so if you guys remember, we talked about we, we practice expanding and condensing. When we're solving logarithmic equations, we need to actually isolate that logarithm to one single logarithm. So the condensing part that we worked on has become very, very important. So we need to practice how can we condense this. Well, since I have an addition, I know I can rewrite that as one single logarithm of multiplication. Log base 2 of x times x plus 2. Now, I can simplify that. Log base 2 of x squared plus 2 equals log base 2 of x plus 6. Then my properties of log say when I have a log base 2 equal to another log base 2, we know that what we're evaluating for are going to equal each other. Yeah, 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 thank you. OK, now the next thing we do is we need to solve this now, right? It says solve. So Will, when I'm going through this, I don't want you to. So we just, now we just need to solve. So therefore, we need to isolate the variables. So we subtract an x. Subtract 6. Therefore, we get x squared minus x minus 6 equals 0. Right? We set it equal to 0. Set it equal to 0. Now, since we have an x raised to the higher power, and we have more than one, what, a, what technique are we going to now want to use to solve this? Factoring. And once we factor it, and we, rewrite, and we rewrite it as a product of our factors, we are then going to want to use, thank you, just raise your hand. But yes, the zero product property, yes. The log was always right here. The one on the right side remains the same. The rule says if you have two of them adding, you can rewrite it as one with the product. Huh? Thank you. Is that the only mistake here? I'm just trying to make sure. Okay. All right, we're good? So now you have this, so now we need to factor this. And so you guys remember, I gave you guys a lot of factoring problems. You guys need to know how to, we got to get through this real quick. So this would be x plus 3 times x minus 2 equals 0, right? So therefore, x equals negative 3, x equals 2, OK? Guys, seriously, I'm going to have to move if you, if you can't keep on going through this. So therefore, we factor this down to these two zeros. All right? Um, so interesting. So now what we have is we have x equals negative 3, x equals 2. But ladies and gentlemen, if you guys remember, we had a domain, right? Do you guys remember talking about the domain of logarithms? Right? The domain of logarithms. We had a graph that looked like this, right? So ladies and gentlemen, if you remember, Gersa, when we looked at our domain, all right, there's some really, really important things I'm saying right now. Our domain was from 0 to infinity. Now, we understand, ladies and gentlemen, you can transfer a graph left and right and go through. However, what I want you guys to understand is our domain is not always um, all real numbers, right? So just because you get an answer for x, that does not mean that it is actually an answer. It can also be extraneous. All right. So what you need to make sure you do is check your answers back in the original equation to make sure they're going to work. Yes? Huh? Extraneous means it's going to not be a part of the solution. It's not going to be within your domain. Because our domain right, is just from 0 to infinity. Um, so what we can do is we can go and plug them in and see that if each one of these works. So let's go and check 2. So I do log base 2 of 2 equals log 
base 2 of 2 plus 2 equals log base 2 of 2 plus 6. Well, 2 raised to the 2 power equals 1. 2 raised to what power equals 4? 2 plus, that's a plus, right? Oh, no, that's a plus. Equals 2 raised to what power gives you 8? 3. 3 equals 3. So do you, guys, do you guys see how 2 is a solution? Yes. Now let's go and check negative 3. Yeah, you plug it in to make sure. So let's go and take a look at negative 3. Log base 2 of negative 3. I'm going to stop right there. Can you take a number, raise it to a power, and get a negative number? No. It's not possible, right? So automatically, I already know that x to negative 3 is extraneous. Extraneous. It's not a part of the solution. So therefore, your only solution is x equals 2. And you will have extraneous solutions on your test and on your homework, so make sure you understand how to label them. All right? Not always. It depends on the graph. It's going to depend on it. If you had a solution, let's say, let's say the graph was shifted. Let's say I had something where my graph was like shifted over, right? And I said negative 1. Well, is negative 1 an answer? Yeah, negative 1 would be an answer, right? But negative 5. So it all depends on the exact equation of what you're dealing with. OK? But just that's what I'm saying. Just don't assume that, yes, more likely than not, a negative number is going to be an extraneous solution. But it's not always going to be the case. Okay.